Hello and welcome to another Autodesk Alias subdivision tutorial. My name is Johan Wendersten and today I will show you how to complete the Apple AirPod model. This is part two of a two part tutorial series. And if you haven't watched part one already, I strongly suggest that you go back and do that. To help you out, I will provide you with a link to that video, which will be appearing on your screen right about now. And for all of you who have already watched the first video, we will now continue adding details to this model. There are of course different ways of doing this, one of which would be creating curves in an orthographic view, which we then project onto the model to trim out the holes and create flanges. But since this is a subdivision tutorial, I will utilize a similar but different technique where I basically do the same thing, but instead of using curves, I use subdivision objects. Since the way I like to look at them is that they're both curves and surfaces, all in one. And this technique which I'm about to show you might seem a bit convoluted at first, but trust me, once you get a hang of it, it will be really flexible and fast. Okay, enough with the talking and let's start modeling. As the target for my subdivision projection, I need one big multi-span surface. So my first goal is to create that one. And whenever I perform operations like this, I don't really like to mess with the original subdivision geometry, although I could since it's converted to NURB surfaces in real time. But instead I usually create a surface copy, which I don't need to be that careful about. So with my subdivision object selected, I click the surface from subdiv button. With keep originals enabled, I click go. And although it seems like nothing happened, this created surface copies from my subdivision objects. And speaking of those, to filter them out, I use pick subdiv to select them. And then I create a new layer for them, which I name subdiv original. There we go. I assign my subdivision objects to that layer and I hide the layer to make sure that the only thing that I can see in my scene now are NURB surfaces, most of which I don't need. So I make sure to get rid of them. Now I need to join these patches into one big surface. And for that, I will use attach, which can be found under object edit, attach and attach. It is important that the type is connect rather than blend. I click go and then I proceed to attach surfaces two at a time. And it's important that I click close to the border that is separating them. Every once in a while, this doesn't seem to work. And then I just undo and redo and it does the trick for me, except for these two last surfaces, which alias for some reason didn't want to let me attach. Luckily, this is not a concern since we will not be projecting any subdivision object over the seam line. So we might as well settle for two surfaces for now. Anyway, I don't need these help surfaces at this very moment. So I make sure to store them away on a hidden layer for now. It is not entirely clear why I choose to bring my original subdivision object back into the scene, since it's mostly in the way. And that's why I'm making it a template here. Then it's time to create the object with which I will cut the hole in the upper center. And for this, I'm starting out with a simple plane, which I'm then adding geometry to by way of the insert edge loop tool, just like in the previous video. Adding thickness to the surface by extruding the border edges then gives me a better sense of what the smoothed version of the object will look like. And with this new information given to me, it's now a walk in the park to sculpt this object in the front view. For the circular object beneath, I start out with a cylinder, which I transform and then fix the topology on before removing all the unnecessary faces. Something which I, by the way, didn't do for the first object, why I'm doing it now. And with that, it is finally time to do the projecting. I hide the subdivision layer. And then I make use of the align to surface tool, which I set to degree three this time, since we are going to project onto a fairly complicated surface. And as far as the direction goes, I want the X axis with all the vertices selected. I click align to surface and then I pick the surface in question. And let me repeat that for this object as well. To make the changes permanent, I select all objects and I delete the history for them. I then make surface offsets from these two help surfaces to act as the back faces or bottoms for the holes or the openings. And here I'm not sure about the offset distance. I set it to one at first, but I think that it might be a bit too much. So maybe 0 
would be better. I feel like it doesn't need to be exact, so I'm just eyeballing it at this point. I use the extrude tool with the normal mode on to extrude flanges from the border edges. When the flanges are made, I can then delete all the original faces since I don't need them anymore. And I extend the flanges a bit with the transform CV parallel tool to make sure that they are indeed intersecting with the A surface. And once it's finished, I simply repeat this process for the bottom opening as well. With all my surfaces prepared, I intersect them to create curves and surfaces on them. Then I enter the trim tool and I use it to simply trim away all the surface that I don't need. And there is quite a lot of trimming that has to be done, so bear with me. With the trimming out of the way, we're left with this result, which looks okay to me. Maybe the holes are a bit too deep. I don't know, it's really hard to tell from the images. Last but not least, it's time for this feature over here. And for that one, we will use a basic circle, which we will transform and then project onto the surface. I select the original circle and then I delete it since I don't need it anymore. And now I once again want to make use of the trim tool, but this time I'm using trim divide to trim out a new set of surfaces from my circular hole, as you can see here. And with that, we managed to add some details to our AirPod as well. As you can tell from me tumbling the model, I've added some details to the other side as well, but I've used the exact same techniques as before. So I'm confident that you will be able to figure it out on your own. It might be hard to tell from this angle, but another thing that I did off camera was to remove one edge loop surrounding the hole or the opening for the speaker. This is because I thought that the crease line that we had there was a little bit too pronounced, why I wanted to smooth that surface out somewhat. And speaking about smoothing things out, we need to apply some fillets to our sharp borders, like this one. So with the fillet tool active, I just drag select all these surfaces, and I make sure that the chord length is set to something really small. Then I press space to build a fillet, and this is my result. Not bad. And as you can tell, I'm not overly worried about surface continuity at this point. When it comes to these really small G1 fillets, it doesn't really matter what the math says, as long as they look good. And I think they do. I mean, this is subdivision concept modeling, after all. Anyway, here you see me finishing up, applying fillets to the rest of the sharp borders, and then we are set. This is just me looking at the model from every angle evaluating it and trying to find any mistakes or glaring errors that I haven't yet noticed. Something which has happened in the past in some of my previous tutorials, for example. Judging from what I can see on the screen right now, the model looks all right to me. But if you are of a different opinion, please let me know what you would like to change with it. With that said, there is one last thing that we have to do. Since an AirPod is not a solitary creature, but one which enjoys company, we need to create the better half of it. And before doing so, I do all the usual stuff that you need to do before copying or duplicating an object. I delete the history, I group it, and I add it to a layer. And then I'm good to go. So I move it out of the way slightly. I make sure that the pivot is at the origin. Then I press Ctrl C on my keyboard to make a copy, and Ctrl V to paste that copy. I enter the non-proportional scale tool and then I press tab to go to the command input where I type minus one, one and one, which mirrors my copy of the AirPod in the X direction, hence the minus one. Good, but I think that I would like a little less social distancing, why I will be moving this AirPod a bit closer to the other one. Oops. Didn't mean to do that, so let me redo it. Okay, I think that spells the end for this tutorial. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.